So this is tutorial two. We're going to try and uh, make a map that actually looks like a landmass on this. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to, uh, I've already done it here, but you just load up your map. You know, you go to open world or you pick it down here. Then you want to go to world, right click and hit load all. And that's going to pop up everything that was once gray, like if it was grayed out like this stuff that I don't know what the stuff is for. This is all like prefab stuff, but uh, environment, um, high res terrain, low res terrain, and your world environment are all the things that we created in tutorial one. So that stuff will pop up and your map will, will show up here. So the first thing we want to do is go down to terrain tools. Um, actually, you want to go to world environment and you want to turn enable and then, oh, I forgot to do that. So this sometimes doesn't show up in area environment zero. For some reason, it just won't show up for a while. So just be patient, come back and check it later. And sometimes this little checkbox will pop back up. So that'll give you your, you know, really cool looking lighting effects, which you'll actually get to see here in a second once we create some land um, or once we modify. This white stuff is technically land. So what we're going to do is the first tool here, this is in my terrain tools menu. You just scroll down a little bit. So there's create, create, modify. And then under modify, you've got your brush selection. So we go to set scaled bias. And this is pretty much a pointless brush. So it's just going to make boxes set the height. You see that little green, the little green bar tells you how tall this thing is going to be. So we could do something way up there. And it's just going to be giant blocks, you know, or we can go down to like a, like a normal kind of a height and it'll just kill all that. And it just makes these big blocks, which look kind of stupid. Um, there's really, you know, it's not a very, very nice looking tool. So as an alternative, we can go to flatten. This is a different brush and we can, uh, set our intensity or height everything here so let's set our height around the same height something like that and it just does like a rounded edge box and it smooths off the top so it's very nice and clean like it's not going to be you know ugly like the uh, those the squared stuff is all really ugly I don't really know why anybody would want to use that um, but this would be really good for like you know, mountains or something, and, uh, yeah, just kind of shot some way off over there, but, yeah, I mean, it's a really nice, nice tool, nice way to flatten out a little plateau, build something on top of it. So you can change the radius, of course, you can change, you know, if you just want, like, a big, um, mountain range out in the distance or something, it's the easy way to get that. So, the next tool we're going to go to is slope. So slope, let's say you want uh, like a bridge, like a land bridge across from here over here, but you want it to come, actually you want it from right here up to this, this peak. So we're going to say uh, slope is going to be pretty high, angle it up, we're going to change the angle um, actually, we're going to have to run all the way back around this direction and just see how the angle changed on there. So we're going to start down here, and wherever you click, that's basically where the, the angle is going to start. And then it's just going to run until you tell it to stop. So like what I meant is like if I click on this landmass right here, your little red... Um, your little red thing and then the point of origin right in the middle there is where it's going to start your slope. See it cuts in just shifts that stuff to match and then you drag it to create the, the uh, extended angle and uh, you know you could make some really cool like Rocky Mountain kind of like jumping you know everything on the same angle like make it really big and then just kind of tap it, you know. 
actually that just destroyed everything all right so that wasn't very good i'm just going to go back um anyways it's a very cool tool very nice uh so the next thing you could do is you could say like i want to just have like a giant um you know ridge of stuff out here i've got the intensity let's see Well, you really can't do much with this on, in terms of, like, quickly making something happen. But you can shift, you know, an entire area and just make it taller. So that's that's the typical uh, click, is, is rise. So if I want to go down, you just hold shift and click, and it'll drop everything. So you can kind of affect an entire landscape pretty fast that way. Or like really get in there on a like a size one, you know, and just go on the edge of something. I'm gonna raise or lower it. The next thing, the next land tool that we're gonna have, and the only other tool land tool we're gonna have is smooth. So smooth is going to uh, paint over these little zones out here, and that just makes it, you know. Like on this land bridge, it's gonna make it really nice and clean, like it's a uh, like it's sand or something, like a sand desert mountain, and you can clean stuff up pretty fast like this, you know. But don't just use this excessively. Like I'm sure, you know, all of these little details in the land are uh, are really nice sometimes. So use it sparingly. Don't just smooth everything out. But that's up to you. Uh, the next thing we want to look at is these painting tools. So, uh, say, first off, we're going to have, um, we're going to do paint material. Because that will give us something to actually look at for the paint itself. So, go down to materials. Click here on the tile itself. And then, we're going to go up to environment levels in our in our uh, this is our asset browser go to environment levels and then go to texture paint and scroll down and these these circles that you've got here are really cool you know world based textures like they look really good so i'm going to use this crazy dragon floor texture to give you a really good idea of what this place looks like you know and how how these textures actually lay out so just hit add material from asset browser and now you've got a fully textured landmass and you can zoom in closer and take a look at it now you can see how it's working here basically when you raise and lower the land it's pulling like this is only like one pixel this whole thing right here is like one little pixel on the like say that giant white space that we had before that's the bitmap and then we're stretching it in certain spots and it's not creating a whole nother thing it's just increasing the space in between basically so this is a whole pixel and that's why that this thing on the on the texture that you laid on top is all stretched out so to fix that we're gonna need to go to let's find a really good spot like one of these hard angle spots down here that's where it's really messed up it stretched this out like three times the width that one pixel like right in the middle is stretched out three times so we're gonna need to go up here to the paint mapping tool and this uh, option right here is what you're looking for so the normal default setting which is uh, the default right here is X Y right so it lays down the texture on an X Y plane so what you're gonna tell it to do for this one is gonna say okay I want it to go north south like I want it to go up on the Z axis this this tall axis and then I want it to go depending on which direction it is like right now I'm a little bit disoriented I don't know which way X is and Y is so I'm just gonna go with uh, and guess I'm just gonna click XZ and it, it works so that's the direction it needed to go in X and Z so that's up down and like east west right so 
Okay, sorry, I've got a, uh, I just went on for about five minutes talking to myself because this bandy cam thing quit. So, um, we're back to paint mapping. I'm back to paint mapping. You guys didn't go anywhere. Um, and yeah, basically, you just want to paint on the edge that you know the axes are on. So, if something's stretched out looking and you don't like the way it looks, maybe you like the way this looks. I mean, that's fine, you know. You can get away with it, but uh, if you don't like it, you just gotta kind of pick whichever one you think it is. So, if it's going this direction or if it's going the other direction, that looks really messed up on the rounded edges. But uh, like down here on the sides, like I just did this side, so now I'm gonna do this side. going to be XZ. And these shapes are very you know, difficult to work with. So you might want to simplify your geometry a little bit or whatever you have to do uh, to get it cleaner if that's what you're going for. But that's, uh, that's how it goes. So the next thing we want to look at is maybe we want to make like a little path. So let's get up here and we're going to paint a path. Let's go to paint material. And this um, is a, a texture that I just grabbed. And if I paint a nice little path here, you can see how it's kind of blurry on the edges but it's, namely, it's uh, it's blocky, right? I mean, I'm, I'm drawing, like, a pixel art path. Like, this is not something that Geralt's going to, like, walk down and be like, oh, this is totally normal out in the woods. You know, maybe this would work for, like, housing. You know, if you're building something inorganic, uh, you could make a path like this, like the walkways in the house. And that's kind of why I picked this industrial texture to show you that it doesn't look natural. So the way you fix that is you simply, I'll put this back on default, and now you can actually see this texture looks, um, it's kind of like a bathroom tile. I was using it stretched out the wrong side. Um, but yeah, this is like a bathroom tile texture. So it looks very blocky, and it kind of has this haze around the edges. So on an organic uh, texture, it would look nice to have that kind of haze blending from one to the other. Uh, it won't be very sharp, but it, it might trick the eye a little bit better. Um, so the way to, how do we make this like where we can make a really tight path? Go down to modify tile parameters and double click out here. So we've got it <laughs> at 257, it's supposed to be 256. Um, I had to change it back. So go to 1024 and hit OK and fuck up your entire map. That's intentional. The way you fix this, it does this anytime you change the terrain. So the way you fix this is you get the outside radius of a smooth brush, go to smooth, crank the radius up to 500, crank the intensity down to zero, and then drag your mouse, click and drag, and it'll repaint all of your terrain back to normal. So now the uh, tile parameters are going to be really big. Um, the resolution on the, the mask map is really big. So that means that when you paint with your paint material, you're going to have a very, uh, watch the transition here. Oh, wait, I changed the tile, so I've actually got to go down and reselect it. So go down to tile, reselect. Now watch this transition. This uh, texture is actually going to change. See it gets sharper? So now I've got a very tight like little path that I can do. And it's a lot easier you know, to make smooth curves and everything. You get a lot more um, definition in them. But like uh, I was saying, like with an or organic texture, it would actually look better probably on the lower resolution tile map 
but uh, on these on these paths you're going to run into a problem if you wanted to do like detail work on the textures in the world so you got to make a decision you know whether you want higher resolution or lower resolution depending on the application so the next thing we'll do is uh, we'll have this big block right here and we'll we'll say say you want to have an entrance to another map or something or you just want a giant hole in the map whatever your reason you can paint a giant hole in the map with the paint hole tool so we're gonna go to three and just paint a big ass hole so maybe this is like the you know the entrance to another realm or something but uh, yeah there's your giant hole in the map and you can see down below it into whatever is below there so that's a useful tool for probably for, like connecting maps to each other and that should be about it